Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today for another webinar in our Market Access and International Approvals webinar series. My name is Daniel Bruno and I'm part of the Testing and Certification Technical Staff here at Visa Compliance Laboratories. Today I'll be presenting to you the certification and approval regulations as well as the technical requirements for electrical equipment, electronics, and wireless product and device approval in Belarus. TRBY stands for the Technical Regulations of the Republic of Belarus. Belarus is a member state, part of the Eurasian Economic Union, or EAEU for short, along with the other countries of Armenia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and of course Russia. Since 2011, the technical reg regulations of these countries have been unified under the Unified TR, or Technical Re Regulations System. These technical regulations are called CU-EAEU Technical Regulations similar to the European Union's directives. So basically, what this means is certain certifications, such as the Eurasian Conformity, also known as the EAC certification, and its product marking, can be utilized and are valid across all five countries in the EAEU. EAC is recognized and provides market access to countries of the Eurasian Economic Union, and is applicable for EMC and electrical safety. Where there are no unified CEU, EA, EU technical regulations to go by, we have national requirements specific to Belarus. These requirements pertain to radio frequency and telecommunication equipment, as well as energy efficient of electrical equipment. As an EMC RF compliance test lab and certification body, we focus on wireless and RF device approvals. So today we will primarily be going over the requirements of radio frequency and telecommunications approvals in Belarus. Additionally, we will also be touching on other requirements regarding energy efficiency, electrical safety, and the product safety approval in Belarus. In this webinar, we will provide an overview of the major topics necessary to understand to get your products on the right track for approval and import in Belarus. If you have any questions on the topics presented today or any other immediate questions regarding compliance testing and product certifications, you can reach us at info at visacompliance.com. Without further ado, let's begin the presentation. Let's first take a look at an overview of the major regulatory requirements in the EAEU and in Belarus. The Eurasian Economic Commission, previously the Eurasian Custom Union Commission, publishes the technical regulations, which is a list of standards applicable for compliance with regulations following the certification or declaration schemes to approve equipment and goods. EAC, CU, or Customs Union, TRCU, or Technical Regulations, of the Customs Union now called the Eurasian Union, are all common terms for Russian Eurasian conformity. The EAC mark covers product conformity requirements for EMC safety and restriction of hazardous substances within the EAEU. On a national level, Belarus has its own technical regulations. TR 2018-024-BY are the new radio frequency and telecommunications requirements that have been in effect as of January 1st of 2019. This regulation is known as the Technical Regular Belarus Telecommunication Facilities Safety. TR 2018-024-BY. This is not to be confused with the electrical safety requirements mentioned previously. The conformity logo for compliance with the technical regulations of Belarus is TPBY, which means Technical Pratabavani, or Technical Regulations of the Republic of Belarus. The main difference of the new technical regulations from the previous is the mandatory in-country testing and TPBY mark. On the EAEU level, there are no unified energy efficiency requirements, which means that approvals on the national Belarusian level is available. In order to import products to Belarus, in addition to the EAC certificate and radio, te radio telecom certificate, the Belarus energy efficiency approval is required as applicable and is both checked at the customs when the product is imported to Belarus, as well as after placing on the market through market surveillance activities. Most Belarus energy efficiency requirements are similar to the European Union's harmonized standards. 
EAC is a product marking, which means Eurasian conformity. It shows approval for products imported to the Customs Union, aka Eurasian Customs Union, or CU. This mark provides access to Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Armenia, and Kyrgyzstan, allowing suppliers to distribute products throughout the entire territory of these countries, roughly 180 million people. This marking is applicable in all industries, such as automotive, chemical, food, etc. But we are focusing on the EMC and electrical safety field. EAC approval is a singular harmonized approval certificate for EMC and or safety for certain products and it covers all member states in the Eurasian Union. Supplied products must conform to all the requirements of the Customs Union Technical Regulations, now known as the Eurasian Economic Union Technical Regulations, or TRCU, TREAEU, in order to comply, apply to the EAC mark. Almost any product to be imported to Belarus requires a TRCU certi certification and mark, and the mark helps provide assurance of product compliance with existing safety, technical, and quality standards. The EAEU technical regulations, TRCU, TREAEU, contain mandatory requirements for EMC and safety aspects, and electrical products must meet all the technical requirements of the EAEU to be placed on the Russian market. The requirements of the EAEU technical regulations can be met by conforming with TRs throughout the application of relevant standards. Here is a non-exhaustive list of technical regulations. The technical regulations particularly relevant to electrical and wireless devices are highlighted. There are two approval schemes for EMC and safety for the EAC. The main difference between them is that when declaring conformity, the manufacturer conducts the tests themselves through an accredited testing laboratory and on the basis of the results obtained in the test reports. They register a declaration of conformity. During certification, the issuance of a certificate of conformity is carried out by a certain certification body, which in turn enters into an agreement with the testing laboratory and, based on the test results, makes a decision on issuing or not issuing a certificate of conformity. Product types determine whether the applicable, applicable scheme is COC or DOC. Technically speaking, the biggest difference in the process between COC and DOC is that COC requires factory inspection and CU in specific inspection reports. It is also important to remember that both COC and DOC conforming to the TRCU is different than conforming to TRBY, which are Belarus's own technical regulations, applicable only within Belarus. Some product types that require the EAC mark and approval are Information Technology Equipment, or ITE, Audiovisual Equipment, Household Appliances, Wireless and Wired Telecommunication Equipment, Scientific Instrumentation and Measurement Equipment, and Medical Equipment. Looking at the EAC approval process, first we must determine if EMC and or LVE requirements are applicable. All electronic products must adhere to EMC requirements. The most common group of products that are exported to the Eurasian Economic Union are devices that work at a nominal voltage of 50 volts AC through 1000 volts AC inclusively or of 75 volts DC through 1500 volts DC. Next, we determine if certification is mandatory for the equipment based on its product type, electrical parameters, HS code, and what, RS, what radio standards, telecom standards are applicable. Furthermore, the, app, the approval procedure will depend on the product type. As for the EAC DOC process, it consists of testing, collecting test reports, adhering to documentation requirements such as user manual in Belarusian, product spec description, local certificate holder in Belarus, and etc. The process can be made only with the help of authorized representative for certification, a residential company from EAEU. This company bears responsibility for the quality of the products and can be the importer, distributor of the product, or any other company located in the CU that will agree to act as a local representative. 
If a certificate of conformity is required, then the approval can be finalized only after the production site audit for quality management system review and tests of samples in the accredited certification laboratory on the territory, if EAEU. EAC COC process consists of these processes such as factory inspection, testing, samples, collecting test reports, documentation, product specs description, and annual factory inspections. The TRCU Declaration of Conformity or certi Certificate of Conformity is required for customs clearance. Eurasian Economic Union EAEU certification system assumes special technical regulation that guarantees the sustainable work of electronics that are to be imported to the EAEU countries. It is aimed at confirming that all imported devices cannot create unwanted effects, electromagnetic interference on other electrical devices, and also that these devices cannot be affected by the electronic means and can work correctly in a common electromagnetic environment. The technical regulations governing this is TRCU 020-2011 on electromagnetic compatibility of technical devices, which has been in effect since February 15, 2013. This is analogous to the Electromagnetic Compatibility Directive 2014-30-EU of the European, European Union. Most electrical products will require testing per this regulation. This consists of household appliances such as kitchen electrical devices like refrigerators, electric ovens, kettles, dishwashing machines, mixers, blenders, microwave ovens, etc. Climate appliances such as air conditioning, vaporizers, fans, kitchen hoods, radiators, heaters, converters, floor heating cables, etc. Personal beauty devices such as hair dryers, electric shavers, trimmers, hair styling straighteners, electric rollers and toothbrushes, etc. Cleaning products such as washing machines, vacuum cleaners, steam brushes, etc. And personal electronic computers and peripherals such as TV, video game stations, audio and video players, laptops, personal computers, smartphones, etc., and so on. Most household devices must be approved in the form of certificate of conformity. Products not covered under certification of conformity such as industrial electrical products will require declaration of conformity. Usually TRCU 020 EMC is to be accompanied by TRCU 004 LVD. This means that one approval document can include both regulations. The certificate of conformity can be issued only after the production site audit for quality management system review and test of samples in the accredited certification laboratory in the territory of the EAEU. After all the procedures are completed, the product can be marked with EAC mark. Certain products are exempt. The exemption list contains equipment such as wire, wires, cords, cables, and cable assemblies, technical facilities containing only resistive load and do not have automatic switching devices, sold electrical heaters without thermostats or fan, electric batteries, and connect a light equipment without active electronic circuits, headphones and speakers that are not functions of the gain, protective equipment creating transient electromagnetic interference of short duration by triggering a short circuit or an abnormal situation in the electrical circuit that does not include safety devices with active electronics. High voltage equipment in which potential sources of electromagnetic interference caused only by localized defects of isolation. An example given is high voltage inductors, high voltage transformers. Provided that the said product does not contain active electronic parts. Capacitors, such as capacitors for power factor correction, um, induction motors, quartz watch without additional features such as radio, light bulbs, plugs, sockets, fuses, switches, circuit breakers without active electronic circuits, 
and passive antenna for radio and television broadcasting. The broadcast group of products that are imported to the Customs Union, currently Eurasian Economic Union, EAEU, are electrical devices that work at a nominal voltage of 50 volts AC through 1000 volts AC, inclusively, or of 75 volts DC through 1500 volts DC, inclusively. All countries of EAEU, Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Armenia, Kyrgyzstan, consider TRCU-004 on the safety of low voltage equipment and for imported goods. This is analogous to Low Voltage Directive LVD 2014-35-EU of the European Union. Now let's take a look at some of the regulated products. Cables. Cables need to be certified according to the above-mentioned technical regulation in order to obtain EAC mark and being successfully exported to the customs union market for a period of either one year, three years, or five years. Namely, the following cable types require the Certificate of Conformity. Power cables with rubber insulation, uninsulated wires for the overhead lines, control cables with rubber or plastic insulation, multi-core mounting cables with plastic insulation, instrumentation cables, cables for non-stationary laying, armored wires and cords, cables with polyvinyl chloride and rubber insulation. On the other hand, there are some kind of cables that are not subjected to the TRCU-004-2011 on safety of low voltage equipment, such as electric cord intended for connection of receivers slash speakers, amplifiers to sound reproducing equipment, also in movable guide conditions, radio frequency cables, and tri triboelectric sen sensor cables. Uh, wiring products, such as switches, including semiconductor types, timers, sockets, electrical outlets, and plugs, splitters, adapt adapters, and extension cords. Uh, household electrical appliances. This product group contains kitchen electrical devices, such as refrigerators, electric ovens, kettles, dishwashing machines, mixers, blenders, etc. Climate appliances such as air conditioners, vaporizers, fans, kitchen hoods, radiators, etc. Personal beauty devices, such as hair dryers, electric shavers, trimmers, uh, etc. Cleaning products, such as washing machines, vacuum cleaners, steam brushes, uh, etc. Entertaining devices, such as TV, video games, stations, audio video, players, and so on. Electrical devices, which are to be connected to the personal computing machines, such as printers, scanners, monitors, multimedia projectors, uninterruptible power supplies, uh, lamps, and other lighting devices. When certifying lighting equipment, it's necessary to thoroughly analyze the technical description of the product in question. In most cases, the product range of every manufacturer includes different models of lamps with different mounting systems, purposes, and components. The following characteristics are to be characterized considers when, when determining the number and type of approvals. One, types of lamps used in a device. It can be incandescent, luminescent, halogen, or LED, depending on that on what the number of approvals and test reports is estimated. Two, ways of mounting of devices. They can be placed on walls, on the ceiling, or on the floor also have an impact on a number of approvals as some types of devices cannot be covered by one certificate. 3. Field of application may also play a significant role. For example, if a LED lamp is used for lighting of operation, such as a surgery room, then a declaration of conformity is issued only after a medical registration is obtained. Uh, the TRCU-004 of LED does not apply to Electronic equipment designed for operation in explosive atmospheres, medical devices, electrical equipment for lifts and elevators, except electrical machinery, electrical equipment with defense purposes, control equipment for grazing fences, electric equipment designed for use on air, water, ground, and underground transport. 
Electric equipment designed for safety systems of reactor units of atomic power stations. TREAEU 037-2016 uh, on restriction of the use of hazardous substances in electrical products and electronics, or ROHS for short, came into operation on March 1, 2018. And its European analog is Restriction of Hazardous Substances, 2011-65-EU. The present technical regulation of the Eurasian Economic Union specifies requirements to use limitation of hazardous substances in electrical products and radioelectronics released into circulation such as lead, mercury, cadmium, hexavalent chromium, polybrominated biphenyls, and polybrominated biphenyl ethers, etc. Currently, ROHS is regulated only under the DOC scheme, but the Declaration of Conformity may be replaced by the Certificate of Conformity on applicant's request. Applicable measures include electrical apparatus and household appliances for the preparation and storage of food and the mechanization of kitchen work, for laundry, clothes, and footwear carrying, including washing, ironing, drying, and cleaning. For room cleaning. For maintaining and controlling microclimate inside the buildings. Sanitary and hygienic. For skin, hair, and nail carrying. For body warming. Vibratory massage devices. Gaming, sports, and gym equipment. Audio and video devices, TV and radio receivers. For sewing and knitting, supply units, chargers, voltage, regulators for gardening. For aquariums and garden ponds, electric pumps, electric and electronic watches, calculators, wiring accessories, and gangers. Uh, electric, electronic computing machines and devices that are plugged into them, including combinations such as servers, PC system units, laptops, tablet, pocket, handheld, and other small size computers, keyboards, manipulators, trackers, and other input-output devices such as mouse devices, gamepads, HMDs, glasses. Uh, removable storage device, monitors, printers, scanners, acoustic systems, and headphones, multimedia projectors, biometric readers, webcams, modems, uninterruptible power supply limit your units. For electric communication means, uh, terminal telecommunication devices, landline and cell phones, phone boxes, telefaxes, tele telexes, portable radio stations, radio frequency, identification tags, uh, copying machines and other electrical office equipment, electric hand tools such as hand electrical portable tools, light sources and lighting equipment including equi equipment embedded in furniture, electrical musical instruments, vending and game machines, cash machines, ATMs, cash registers, cable for use at rated voltages up to 500 VDC or VAC, so fiber optic cables, Aut automatic and safety switches, safety and fire alarms. Exempted equipment include products of electrical engineering and radio electronics intended for use at rated voltages greater than 1000 volts AC and 1500 volts DC, products of electrical engineering and radio electronics intended exclusively for use at component parts, electrical equipment not included in the list provided appendix number one to this technical regulation. Electric toys, <clears throat> photovoltaic panels such as solar panels, incoming in the, comp in the composition of products of electrical engineering and radio electronics, products of electrical engineering and radio electronics intended for use as a part of ground and orbital space projects or objects, electrical equipment designed exclusively for use on air, water, land, and underground transport. Electric batteries and accumulators, including those produced in circulation on the territory of the Union as part of electrical products and radio electronics. Used electrical products and radio electronics. Measuring instruments and medical devices. 
Please be aware that EAEU TR037-2016 requirements become mandatory from March 1st, 2020. However, it doesn't mean that if you put your product to the EAEU market prior to this date, you don't need to show the compliance to, the, to this regulation after March 1st, 2020. Actually, it doesn't mean when you put the product to the EAEU market, because starting from March 1st, 2020, you should have EAEU DOC against ROHS requirements anyway. In case of violation, there are penalties. Requirements for declaration of conformity are as follows. CB test reports with CB certificate, CE EMC report, application forms, technical description, and user manual in Belarusian. Actually, Russian is the most widely used language across the EAEU, but for missions, shipments to Belarus, a manual translated into Belarusian must be included. There is strict market surveillance to confirm that this requirement is being met. Whether the manual is a single multilingual guide or a separate guide in each language is up to the manufacturer. A hard copy user manual must be supplied with the product as well. First, a draft label with necessary market marking requirements and Finally, ISO 9001 Certificate, Report of Factory Inspection. In accordance with the Customs Union legislation, a foreign manufacturer must have a local representative company, such as an applicant, on the territory of the Customs Union to issue the certificate or declaration. This means that an applicant for you can be your customer, distributor, or official representative company in CU. Lead time for project can be from two to four weeks, and the validity for the declaration is one to five years. Period of validity of approval decided by an applicant. It is the responsibility of the manufacturer to provide copies of the TRCU declaration of conformity when products are imported to Russia, and this is mandatory for customs. If changes or modifications take place, you should inform certification body to, to assume whether new approval should be issued or not. If any changes are to be added to the product, the new approval is needed. But if you've been issued the approval to TRCU LVD and later decide to change the color as an example of the product, there is no need in addition, appro additional approval. ALI changes all changes must be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. In the case of non-compliance, import is not allowed and restricted, and penalties and fines are incurred in the case of sale. The requirements for declaration of conformity are as follows. In-country testing is required, uh, and one to two samples are needed. CB tests reports with CB certificate, CE EMC report, application forms, technical description, user manual in Belarusian language, a hard copy user manual must be supplied with the product, draft label with necessary marking requirements, ISO 9001 certificate, report of factory inspection, TRCU authorized factory inspection report. For the factory inspection, it must be performed by a TRCU authorized factory inspector. Overall CU inspection process is similar to CIG 023 inspection process. However, the CU certification body will not accept the CIG 023 report for TRCU approval. So in accordance with CU regulation, a factory inspection should be executed and report should be issued. Um, should be issued by a certification body accredited in CU only and in Russian language or national language for Belarus, Kazakhstan, Armenia, or Kyrgyzstan. The process can be made only with the help of authorized representative for certification, a residential company from EAEU. This company bears responsibility for the quality of the products on the base of local representative agreement. It can be the importer, distributor of the product, or any other company located in the CU that will agree to act as a local representative. Longest lead time I've seen is roughly eight weeks. TRCU approval is valid for terms of one, three, or five years, with the terms chosen by the manufacturer. 
recommended to choose five year as a TRC approval term, unless the product is expected to go through technical modification in the near future. Annual maintenance and inspection, or so-called inspection control, in case of applying for more than one year certificate. It assumes that the certification body which issued the CUC needs to confirm that the product is still produced at the same quality. It can be done through the retesting or reviewing of quality management system documents in some cases. The certification body can initiate production site audits during AMI. Um, family model grouping is allowed. If changes or modifications take place, you should inform certification body to assume whether new approvals should be issued or not. Customs Union Certification System does not have a renewal pro procedure. This means that the certification process must be repeated, including tests, production site, audit, if required. After all the procedures are done, you will receive a new approved document. The EAC mark is a single sign of circulation that indicates that the products marked by them have all passed and established and established in the technical re regulations of the Eurasian Economic Union. Procedures for assessing or confirming compliance and meets the requirements of all technical regulations of the Eurasian Economic Union that apply to this product. Marking with a single circulation mark is carried out before release of products into circulation on market of the Eurasian Economic Union. The procedure for applying the mark, <clears throat> manufacturers, authorized persons, importers, or suppliers, products have the right of fix the mark. If the products have passed all the established relevant technical regulations of the Eurasian Economic Union, procedures for assessing compliance, compliance in the territory of any of the states, Members of the Eurasian Economic Union, which is confirmed by the documents provided for relevant forms of conformity assessment in the Eurasian Economic Union. So this means the EAC mark cannot be placed on the product until the requirements of all applicable EAEU technical regulations are met and CUC and DOC is issued. The size must be at least five millimeters the mark can be placed in any way that provides a clear visibility during the entire service life or shelf life of the product. A single mark is applied to each unit of production, packaging, or accompanying documentation, such as a manual or brochure. The EAC image should be monochrome and contrast with the color of the surface on which it is applied. Markings, signs, and inscriptions that can be misleading are not allowed. Other conformity marks on the products should not impair the visibility, clarity, and readability of the EAC mark. Here are some examples of the declaration and certificates of conformity. So to summarize, the TRC conformity and the EAC mark is required for EMC, safety, and ROHS for most electrical equipment. Now we will look at the Belarusian technical regulations for radio frequency and telecommunications equipment. The Belarus technical regulations is the product marking that is recognized in the Republic of Belarus and provides market access across Belarus for wireless RF and telecommunications products. The TR 2018-024-BY is a technical regulation of the Republic of Belarus, the Telecommunication Facilities and Safety, which is a radio frequency and telecommunication requirement of Belarus. This regulation has been in effect since January of last year. The technical regulation applies to all telecommunication products and devices that connect to telephone lines, utilize the radio frequency spectrum, and or transmit information wirelessly to be circulated in on the Belarusian market. Some examples of devices that connect to telephone lines are telephones, fax machines, and modems. Some examples of devices that use radio spe electric spectrum on wi are wireless routers, cellular phones, cordless telephones, Bluetooth devices, wireless LAN or WLAN devices. The TRBY label slash mark 
must be displayed on the Belarus approved device. There are 30 standards that encompass telecom products with wire and optic interfaces, as well as interference causing radio frequency devices. Some of the national standards followed in Belarus have equivalent IEC, EN, ETSI, or IEEE standards. For example, STB 10788. 2009 for 2.4 gigahertz data transmission equipment is equivalent to ETSI EN 300-328 in the EU. But many do not have equivalent standards. Local testing must be performed in Belarus for all devices regardless of whether an equivalent standard exists or not. Currently, there are no plans for unifying requirements for wireless devices across EAEU, and so national level standards must be followed. There are two approval schemes for telecom and radio products in Belarus, certification and declaration. The approval screen to be used will, be de will depend on the product. We will go into this in detail on the next slide. Certification of conformity can always be used instead of a declaration of conformity. Approval in the form of certification is, is preferred. Here are the list of regulated products under the Certification of Conformity. Generally, products that are not intended for consumer use would be long in, the, in this list. List of radio and telecom products that are subject to conformity assessment in the form of mandatory certification of conformity. 1. Telecommunication facilities that perform functions of data transmission systems, like data packet switching and routing equipment, data transmission network security equipment, network service delivery equipment, equipment for aggregating and managing access to data transmission network resources, and equipment for transmitting voice, video, and multimedia information via data transmission networks and subscriber terminal equipment. Two, telecommunication facilities that, has, that perform functions of digital backhaul systems, like equipment for digital systems that transmit the Plesiochronus digital hierarchy, Equipment for digital systems that transmit the synchronous digital hierarchy. Multifunction channel forming equipment of flexible configuration capability. Optical transport network equipment. Equipment for spectral compression of optical channels and transmission media converters. Three, telecommunication, telecommunications facilities that perform functions of service switching and control systems like automatic telephone exchanges for office and industrial use, software switches, media gateways, signaling gateways, media gateway controllers, SIP proxy servers, redirect servers, and registration servers, and equipment for the IP Multimedia Core Network Subsystem, or IMS. 4. Telecommunication facilities that perform functions of forming, coding, decoding, multiplexing, converting, transmitting, and receiving digital broadcast television and radio signals, like coders and decoders used at communication stations. 5. Radio electronic facilities. Radio equipment for radio relay communication stationary transmitters and digital broadcast radio and television relay stations, and base stations and relay stations for mobile and radio communication systems. In order to obtain the Belarus Technical Requirements Certification of Conformity, there are four different approval processes that can be taken. There are a few differences in the process of each certification method, and the applicability of each method, starting with the first one on the very left. This scheme applies to mass-produced telecommunication devices. Conformity Assurance Scheme for mass-produced devices begins with the applicant preparing and submitting an application for certification to the certification body. These documents are reviewed by the certification body and an agreement is signed between the two parties. The applicant also signs an agreement with a test lab for testing then samples the, samples the products are prepared by the applicant and provided to the lab. 
The certification body is on site at the accredited testing lab as part of the conformity assessment procedures. Testing may also be performed at the manufacturer's premises. Afterwards, the certification body performs a factory inspection, issues a factory inspection report, and issues the certificate of conformity to the applicant. Lastly, the certification body must regularly assess the certified product and carry out regular assessment by testing samples and or by factory inspection. We will go into detail about the regular assessments in a later slide. Moving on, we will go into the process that it can avoid factory inspections. The manufacturer of the mass-produced device has a quality management system that has been certified by the National Conformity Assessment System of the Republic of Belarus, then factory inspections can be avoided. This will mainly apply to devices manufactured in Belarus. Otherwise, the process is the same as in the last slide. Regular product surveillance assessment are still required. The last two processes apply to batch or cons consignment shipments of products and one-off devices. For batch or, cons or consignment shipments, the applicant submits the application, provides the batch shipment along with the test sample, the certification reviews the documents while the local test lab performs testing on the sample. Then the certification body issues a certificate for the batch shipment. Regular assessments are not required afterwards. For one-off products, the applicant submits the application, provides the batch shipment along with the test sample, the certification reviews the documents while the local test lab performs testing on the sample. Then the certification body issues a certificate for the one-off device. Regular assessments are not required afterwards. In-country testing is required, and one sample in conducting mode is required. Test reports, manufacturer information, user manual or brochure, and technical specifications are all required as part of the application. Technical specs should show the electrical characteristics and parameters of the device. The user manual or brochure should be in Russian or Belarusian. The intended use of the device and software version should be specified. Information regarding installation, safe operation, safe storage, and troubleshooting the device should be included as well. Factory inspection is required as shown previously, and annual inspections upon in issuance of certificate is required. For certifications, the, certif the certificate holder can be the manufacturer, including a foreign manufacturer. So local re representation is not required for Belarus certification scheme. But for a declaration scheme, local certification holder is required. Depending on how long the factory inspections take, Belarus approvals for radio frequency devices can range from 10 to 18 weeks or longer. Certificates of conformity are valid for five years. Radio modules can obtain approval, but must be placed on the market as a module and not embedded in a host device. Family model grouping is allowed in Belarus as long as all models are listed on the same test report and share the same supporting documents. Renewals in Belarus are not available. All submissions are treated as new applications. Surveillance is performed twice during the, during the validity of period of the certificate. The first surveillance occurs after one and a half years and consists of a factory inspection and or testing of the samples and another surveillance another one and a half years after that. Here are some samples of the Certificate of Conformity. So we just went over the basic information on approval in Belarus by certification on conformity for telecommunications and radio frequency devices. Next, we will move on to the declaration of conformity. The scheme can only be used for products that go out into the consumer market. In any case, certification of conformity can always be used instead of a declaration of conformity and approval in the form of certification is, before, is preferred. Both certification and declaration required in test in country testing. Now let's take a look at the procedures for declaration. In this slide, we take a look at the options for proceeding to declare conformity for your device. These two are applicable for wired telecom devices or non-radio frequency devices, and does not require in-country local testing within Belarus. 
On the next, next slide, we will show the declaration procedures for radio frequency devices that do require in-country testing. Similar to certification, the company must prepare documents showing compliance with the applicable technical requirements. Evidence of manufacturing control must be provided, and testing can be, can, can be performed at the applicant's own accredited test lab or lab of their choosing, which may be foreign. The applicant provides the declaration and submits the application to the registration body, who then reviews the application and registers the DOC. Now the process is slightly simplified for batch consignments or one-off devices. The difference here being that it, it, as it's a batch shipment of one-off product, no proof or evidence of manufacturing control is required. In this slide, we take a look at the options for conformity declaration for radio devices. The previous two slides were for non-radio devices. Radio devices will generally require in-country local testing within Belarus. Similar to certification, the company must prepare documents showing compliance with applicable technical requirements. Documents proving the existence of product control during the production process must be provided. And testing must be performed in Belarus. The applicant provides the declaration and submits the application to the registration body, who then reviews the application and registers the DOC by making a record in the Customs Union Common Register or the National Conformity Assurance System Register. This is the only process out of the three that permit using an authorized local representative. The same procedures apply for one-off devices and batch shipments, but the batch shipment is sent to the local lab. If the manufacturer can show a certificate of conformity for the quality management system issued by the National Conformity Assessment System of Belarus, then they do not necessarily need to perform in-country testing, but can perform testing at their own accredited test lab or another accredited lab. Otherwise, the process for declaration is the same. So to summarize, these are the ways to perform a declaration of conformity for radio frequency device in Belarus. List of radio and telecom products that are subject to conformity assessment in the form of mandatory declaration of conformity. 1. Assign signal conversion devices for data transmission via switched communication channels and unswitched voice frequency channels, including devices that are part of any other equipment, such as modems and fax modems. 2. All types of telephones to be connected to wired telecommunication lines. 3. Record telecommunication terminals, including terminals that are part of any other equipment, fax machines and fax modems, including those that are part of any other equipment. 4. Telecommunication facilities that perform functions of service switching and control systems, such as application servers and video and audio conference control and management equipment. <clears throat> 5. Telecommunication facilities that are used to build subscriber access networks, such as wired digital subscriber access equipment or, or Ethernet network access equipment, including Ethernet media converters, like passive optical network equipment. 6. Subscriber terminal units for mobile cellular telecommunication systems, including radio modules that are part of other equipment. 7. Subscriber radio stations. <clears throat> 8. DECT radio equipment, including radio modules that are part of other devices. 9. Wireless broadband access equipment, including radio modules that are part of other equipment. 10. Short range radio communication devices, including radio modules that are part of the other equipment. Operate in a radio frequency band between 25 megahertz and 30 gigahertz, that are, and are intended for transmitting telecommunication messages. 10.1, non-specific short-distance radio communication devices intended for telemetry, telecontrol signaling, and data video audio transmission, including smart home systems, cordless video cameras, portable radio stations, baby monitors, and similar devices. 
<clears throat> short distance radio communication devices for tracking, monitoring, and data collection that are intended to be used for emergency detection. Taking meter readings via a radio channel, arrangement of wireless communication lines in an industrial environment, and arrangement of operation of wireless sensors and actuators, including personnel, personnel monitoring, and communication. 10.3. Integrated information transmission and processing facilities for automobile transport and road traffic control that ensures data transmission between motor vehicles and between the motorway infrastructure and motor vehicles for various information, tourism, and transport related purposes, including automatic toll collection except automobile short distance radar detectors. 10.4. Radio signaling devices using radio communication for transmitting messages about the activation of security alarm devices. 10.5. Model management systems and devices, including radio model management that are used on the ground, in the air, and on or under the water, and in a domestic environment, except unmanned aerial vehicles. 10.6. Radio mod microphones, and wireless audio systems, including low-power one-way transmitters that are intended for short-distance audio signal transmission. 10.7. Radio frequency identification systems that are intended for object identification and consist of inter interrogators and radio tags, except radio tags and other passive devices of RF identification systems. Short-range devices or SRD, like RFID or NFC, operating between 25 megahertz to 30 gigahertz, must comply with TR 2018-024-BY. But if the SRD is outside this range, then there are no mandatory technical requirements, but an exemption letter must be obtained. Now going into the declaration requirements. In-country testing is required, and one sample and conducted mode is required. Test reports, manufacturer information, user manual or brochure, and technical specifications are all required as part of the application. Technical specs should show the electrical characteristics and parameters of the device. The user manual or brochure should be in Russian or Belarusian. The intended use of the device and software version should be specified. Information regarding installation, safe operation, safe storage, and troubleshooting the device should be included as well. Factory inspection is not required, unlike in the certification scheme. Local representation as a certificate holder is required for the declaration scheme, unlike in the certification scheme. Lead times are much shorter as no factory inspections are required for declarations of conformity. Declarations are valid for a period of five years, which is the same as certificates. Radio modules can obtain approval, but must be placed on the market as a module and not embedded in a host device. Family model grouping is allowed in Belarus as long as all models are listed on the same test report and share the same supporting documents. Renewals in Belarus are not available. All submissions are treated as new applications, and there are no surveillance or regular assessment requirements. That sums it up for the process and basic requirements for declaring conformity in Belarus. So now that we've finished going over the approval schemes and procedures, we'll take a look at some of the other equipment for Belarus radio frequency and telecommunications approvals. On the right are label requirements and labeled itself for TR 2018-024-BY from the resolution of the Council of Ministers of the Republic of Belarus number 383 from May 24, 2017. The mark of conformity with the technical regulation of the Republic of Belarus is a combination of the letters T and P located inside an enclosing round-edged border interrupted by the symbol BY. The size of conformity marks shall guarantee that its elements are clearly visible and legible with the naked eye on the general colored background of the product. It can be affixed by any method ensuring its visibility and legibility within the entire service-slash-self-life of the product. <clears throat> the 
The conformity mark can be affixed to the product itself and the other information about the manufacturer. As, as a rule, it should be affixed on the product's fixed part and shall be displayed in the attached operation documents. It, is, it also may be affixed to the smallest consumer packing or container and specified in the operation documents attached to the product, where it is impossible to affix it to the product itself due to product size or type. Where such products have no packing, the conformity mark shall be displayed in the attached operating operation documents. Where other marks of conformity are affixed to the product, they shall not worsen the visibility, clarity, and legibility of the conformity mark. So to summarize, the TRCU conformity and the EAC mark is required for EMC, safety, and ROHS for most electrical equipment. TRBY is a conformity assessment marking for wireless telecom and RF devices. Now we will look at the Belarusian energy efficiency requirements for electronics and electrical equipment. Energy efficiency requirements for external power sources will come in force in Belarus starting from September 1, 2017. Energy efficiency approvals issued based on the National Energy Efficiency Standards of Belarus or EESCB for short. This certification is mandatory for products that connect to external power or power sources. Energy efficiency requirements for external power sources in Belarus are fully harmonized with the European EE requirements. Energy efficiency label is not required. National Certificate of Conformity, or the STBEECOC of the Republic of Belarus, has been mandatory in, ex in order for external power supplies that connect to the AC power grid to be imported to the Belarusian market. The mandatory procedure is certification, except for motors, which is the Declaration of Conformity. From September 1, 2017, the energy efficiency requirements that were successfully enforced in Belarus for motors and external power supplies, or adapters. From, from July 1, 2018, Mandatory energy efficiency and, where applicable, energy labeling requirements will be enforced for a range of household appliances such as refrigerators, washing machines, air conditioners, etc. Audio video, such as TV sets, TV monitors, lighting equipment, and information technology equipment such as printer scanners, etc. For external power supplies, energy labeling is not required. There are two approval schemes for energy efficiency in Belarus. Certification or declaration. Certification of conformity is required for all devices that connect to external power, such as televisions, printers, and household appliances. Declaration of conformity is only applicable and available for electric motors. The approval process for energy efficiency certification is very simple. We prepare the required documentation, provide to the certification body for application and technical review, after which they provide their feedback and we update the submission per their feedback until the application is approved and the certificate is of conformity is issued. For the certification requirements, no in-country testing is required. Manufacturer shall be the applicant, therefore no local representative is required. The lead time is around four weeks. The validity of approval will take about five years. Family model grouping is permitted if devices share the same test report. Multiple branding is permitted as well. Renewals are not available, therefore all submissions require new applications. Mandatory document surveillance must be performed once every two years and modular approvals are not applicable. List of energy efficiency products that are subject to conformity assessment in the form of mandatory certification of conformity. Cooling household devices, such as refrigerators, freezers, and their combinations. Electrical ovens or hobs. Air conditioners with power rate up to 12 kilowatts. Dishwashers. Washing machines. Drying machines external power sources, non-directional household lamps, fluorescent lamps without integrated ballast, high-intensity discharge lamps, TV sets, TV monitors, and household and office equipment, standby and off mode.
For the labeling and marking of the energy efficiency, the requirements are as follows. The manufacturer's name or trademark, model identifier, energy efficiency class, and energy consumption. Energy efficiency labels shall be done in the Russian or Belarusian language. For external power supplies, energy labeling is not required. For motors, class of energy efficiency needs to be indicated on the marking plate. Here are samples of the certificate of conformity. So to summarize, the TRCU conformity and the EAC mark is required for EMC, safety, and ROHS for most electrical equipment. TRBY is the conformity assessment marking for wireless telecom and RF devices. And we just went over Belarusian energy efficiency requirements. This concludes our webinar on Belarus market access and approvals for electrical equipment and wireless products. I hope this webinar was helpful for you in determining whether Belarus certification or declarations apply to you, and if so, what the process is like and what the requirements are. The EAEU has EMC, safety, and ROHS requirements, while Belarus has its own radio, telecom, and energy efficiency regulations. Compliance with the technical regulations of Belarus is required for all radio and telecom products and ensures product reliability, regulation, conformity, and allows a level up for use in the country. Whether, the, whether products are manufactured in Belarus or in other countries, they must be approved and tested in Belarus prior to distribution or placement on the market. Visa Compliance Labs is a 17025 accredited EMC RF te compliance test lab and 17065 accredited product certification body. We are a telecommunications certification body in the US, Canada, EU, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Japan, and we provide certification and approvals for all product types in countries all over the world. If you would like to stay in touch with regulatory updates, follow us online. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions on the information presented today, or any journal inquiries, you can reach us anytime at info at visacompliance.com. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful day.